Hello everyone, it's Jennifer and welcome back to my videos and blog post series called My Favorite Crafty Things. I'm covering everything that you need for card making, all my favorites of 2013. Today is about papers and other surfaces that I like to use for my card making. I'll cover some basics and also some more specialty papers and maybe you'll find something that you'd like to try out. So let's get started with the basics and of course we want to start with white cardstock. Now this is something that I feel really strongly about. I am head over heels madly in love with Nina white cardstock. This is by far my favorite of all the white card stocks. I like it for many reasons. One is that you can get it in a ream of 250 sheets or in packs of 25. It's very smooth. You can stamp on it beautifully. It's 80 pounds, which is a pretty good weight of white cardstock, and it works great with all inks and Copic markers. So I only keep this white cardstock on hand. I have a few other specialty things, but this is the one that I use for all of my daily crafting. I even get it cut at Kinko's into fourths so that it's four and a quarter by five and a half pieces that I can reach to quickly. I love this cardstock. As I said, it takes inks very well. Here I am using some Distress Inks on it. You can see it picks up the color really well. It die cuts beautifully. I don't get frayed edges. It scores nicely. It's just by far the cardstock that I like the most. It's definitely worth having. This cardstock is very Copic friendly and also works great with colored pencils. Now there is one other white cardstock that I keep on hand. I keep it in a separate bag so I don't get it mixed up. This is a Simon Says Stamp Heavyweight White Cardstock. It's much heavier in weight. This is 120 pounds. This is what I use if I want to do a card base where it's a one layer card and do Copics because Copics won't bleed through this. It's a little slicker than the other, so you can see not as much ink goes on it, which is still very beautiful. It's just something you want to keep in mind. And you want to be careful because your ink might smudge if you don't let it dry for a little bit uh, because it's got a slick surface to it. But I love this cardstock for card bases. So this is definitely one that you might want to have on hand too. It has a little bit warmer of a white color, but it's not that big of a difference. So that's the Nina on the left and the Heavyweight Simon Says Stamp on the right. So these are the two whites that pretty much I only keep besides watercolor paper, which I'll talk about in a little bit. Now another cardstock that I reach for quite often is craft cardstock. I like it because it goes with any style of card. It kind of neutralizes a lot of bright colors and it great, works great for masculine cards. There are actually three different colors of craft that I happen to like. The first is Nina Desert Storm, which is a lot like the white that I showed you before. It's also 80 pounds, and it's a very light craft that's smooth and great for stamping. The middle color, it's a little bit darker, is My Favorite Things Craft. I like this one a lot because it's kind of a middle shade. It's 100 pounds, so it's a little bit thicker, great for a card base, and it's really nice and smooth and takes stamping quite well. Then the third on the right is the Hero Arts Craft, which is kind of a different ballpark. It's thinner, it's only 65 pounds, but it comes in note cards and envelopes and also in full eight and a half by 11 sheets. But it has a little texture to it, kind of like a paper bag. So that's different. It has a little texture to it. So uh, you just you know have to keep that in mind when you're stamping on it, but I love it and I use it a lot because of that texture and the little irregularities in it that make it so lovable. So I really do like all three craft card stocks for different reasons. Lately I've been finding myself reaching for black cardstock quite often. I like the contrast of it and even a thin line on a card really makes the card kind of pull together and gives a nice defined edge. There are two black cardstocks I like. One is the Basil Licorice Twist. It's 100 pounds solid black. That's the one that you see on the left. It's a little more bluish black. Now the warmer black on the right is the Hero Arts black paper. Now this comes in note cards, envelopes, and also 8.5 by 11 sheets. I like this because it's white on the other side. So you can make a note card out of it and have a white inside. Both of these are great, just two different products. The black uh, Hero Arts is uh, 80 pound instead of the 100 pound like the Basil. This brings us into colored cardstock. Now there are three different types of colored cardstock that I like to use for card making. The first is from My Favorite Things. This is a variety pack that you can get on their website. This is a really high quality cardstock. It's 100 pounds and it's just a beautiful assortment of colors. Now you can buy more of each of these colors in individual packs, but I really like all the colors so I find myself just buying more and more of the sampler packs. I think there's about 29 sheets in here and they keep coming out with more colors. I also like the Basil Card Shop uh, cardstock. This is also 100 pounds, comes in some great colors. And I use this a lot for card making too. These are just a few of the colors that they have to offer. There are 28 colors in their variety pack, but you can buy more of each individual color also. These are all eight and a half by 11 because you can cut them in half and make a card quickly. 
I also love the Hero Arts Hero Hues papers, note cards, and envelopes. This is what I use by far more than anything else. About 95% of my card bases are these Hero Arts note cards. I love the quality of these. I love that they're already cut and scored perfectly, and I mostly love that they're white on the inside. They take ink very well. I don't have to worry about it working well with the ink. I don't have to worry about scoring it. Quick and easy. And I also love that you can get the papers in 8.5 by 11 that perfectly match all of the note cards too. You can buy variety packs, all different kinds of options. They even have black or dark colors with the white core on the inside. The only time I really don't use Hero Arts for a note card base is if I want to do a vertically opening card. Now my favorite thing about the Hero Hughes line from Hero Arts is these envelopes. I think they're absolutely adorable. They come in all the great wonderful colors that match the note cards and regardless of what kind of card I make I almost always 99.9% .9 of the time use these envelopes. I love them and they fit all four and a quarter by five and a half cards so they're great to have on hand and much better than a plain old envelope. Another basic must-have in my book is the watercolor cardstock because it's great for techniques. This year a new one came out that I'm just head over heels in love with. It's the Distress Watercolor Cardstock from Tim Holtz. Don't let the Distress name fool you. It's just a great, wonderful watercolor cardstock. One side has a little texture to it. The other side is smooth. I love having that option. It's 118 pounds, so it's nice and thick. I like to use this anytime I use water on my projects. It's a very good white, which is great. Sometimes it's hard to find watercolor papers in a crisp white, and it holds up really well despite any kind of techniques that I do on it. This is really a great product. I love that it also comes in four and a quarter by five and a half inch sheets. I finally find myself using vellum once again because I found one that I really like. It's the Basil 40 pound vellum. I like this because it's nice and thick. It's, uh, it's substantial enough that it doesn't seem like it's not there. And it also holds up very well. It heat embosses well. You can use it in embossing folders very well. You can still see through it enough to make it look like the fun vellum, but it's nice and durable. So this is one that I would highly recommend. So now I wanted to talk about a few specialty papers, just fun things that I find myself reaching for more and more these days or that have come out this year. One that's become very popular is wood grain cardstock. I love the look of wood grain, especially on a masculine card. And I love this cardstock because it's nice and subtle. If you look carefully, you can see there's a wood grain pattern to it. It's very intricate and it's really beautiful. And you can use this for a card base. A little more interesting than a plain white cardstock, but not too much texture like you would get from an embossing folder. And you can rub ink on it, which really takes ink well. This comes in a few different colors. I think you can get it in craft also, but I find myself using the white the most. Now, another thing you can get is actual wood paper. So these are wood veneers, super thin wood paper. You can get it in the light color or the cherry color, which is really not too cherry looking. It's just a kind of a medium wood shade. This is a fantastic product. I love it. It cuts well. It die cuts well. You can use your wafer thin dies on these. You can even add color. That red there I added with a, with a Copic marker, but you could use any marker. You can stamp on it. If you use a good permanent ink, it doesn't uh, bleed. I use the Hero Arts Black ink. I really like these. I, you can put a piece to cover the front of your card. You can do whatever you want with this. It's a fantastic product, and I would highly recommend trying it. It's a great way to add the look of texture without too much bulk. I also wanted to mention if you wanted to try a few of these papers that you've seen me mention here, I know Simon Says Stamp has a variety pack that you could try. I'll link to it in my description below, but it has one each of a few of the different sheets that I've talked about so you can give them a try and see if it's something that you would like and then you could always buy larger packs if you were interested. Uh, another product I also use quite often is transparency or acetate. It's just a clear piece of paper. Um, what I use by far, I love this product, it's a Hero Arts acetate note card. It comes in a pack like this. There are the acetate note cards, the clear pieces. There's white inserts which I usually don't use and it has some envelopes in there too. But let me sh give you a closer look at these clear note cards. You could go buy a uh, transparency at the office store, but you'll never find any this thick and this crisp. This is awesome. It's nice and thick. You can stamp on this with white stays on or with black stays on. You can run this through an embossing folder. You can die cut this. I use this as a card base quite often. If you look at my blog, I have a ton of examples. This one I put through an embossing folder and I just love how it gives that white look when you run it through an embossing folder. There's a lot you can do with these and I fi by far think the Hero Arts product is the best. Now lately there have been some glitter papers that I've just fallen in love with. Glitter paper is nothing new, but these are like a softer glitter. There's not like, it's not 
it's super bright, it's not messy, it doesn't rub off one bit. The product that I like is new from Die Cuts with a View. It's called Glitzy Glitter. Now, if you look at the cover of this, you would think it's really crazy glitter, but it's not. Look at it. It's like the soft, subtle glitter. It's almost smooth, so you could kind of stamp on this if you wanted to. It's very thin. You can die cut with it, but look at it. It's just like this great shimmer, very soft looking, and it does not rub off at all. So this is very fine. It's not too bright. So if you like glitter but not too much of it, this is a great product for you. And I'm just crazy about this, and I'm just so excited that I finally have my hands on it. And the colors are quite beautiful in it, too. There's the 6x6 pack. There's another pastel pack, too. This is the 12x12 one. If you look at the front, it looks like it's crazy glitter, but it's really quite subtle, and the colors are just delicious. This one has gold in it and another shade of gold and some greens, too. I'm finding myself using this for little pieces, little strips on cards, or die cut little hearts to put on a card. You could even uh, run this through an embossing folder if you wanted to. A lot that you can do with this and it's a great way to add a little something of interest to your card without any kind of bulk. I also wanted to show you how well this die cuts. If you use a shim with your dies, you have no problem die cutting through the glitter paper. Another of these kind of soft, subtle glitter papers is this POW paper from American Crafts. I only have a few pieces of this left, but it comes in like a silver, a dark, and a, um, like more neutral colors. This has a little bit more shimmer to it, but it's still nice and smooth and a little more subtle. I really like this one too. Next, I wanted to talk a little bit about mirror kind of cardstocks. There are two that I like. One is the Ranger foil cardstock. This has a foil look to it. It's got a white core and base to it. Um, it's quite thick. If you are um, careful, you can die cut it. I've die cut it with my wafer thin dies. I just use a couple shims in there or my metal adapter plate, which I talked about in my last video. And this will die cut. It's fun to stamp on with uh, like a stays on or archival black ink, a permanent ink. Uh, you can also heat emboss on this or run it through your embossing folders. Even just as a base on your card, a background, it's just a fun little bit of shine. I, I think it has a lot of potential. You can color it with your Copic markers too. I also like the Tim Holtz mirrored sheets. This is like a perfect mirror. So you can see my reflection there. I love to heat emboss on this. So you can see I did that uh, Happy Holidays on there. This is a little bit thicker, so it will really only die cut with your super thick Sizzix dies. It does have an adhesive backing, so you can put it onto a project. I love this these mirror sheets. There's a lot that you can do with these bad boys, so I would recommend trying those out too. Now, sometimes I want to add a little thickness or dimension to, say, my die cuts or just a layer on my card. There are two products that I like to use, the Ellen Hudson craft board this is about a sixteenth of an inch thick, so it's not as thick as chipboard. It's much prettier than chipboard, and you can die cut through this with your wafer thin dies. And what I would do is die cut a couple of these, glue them together, and it'd be thick enough to put on a card as like a substantial embellishment. You could even put one layer of pattern paper on the top of it if you wanted to, too. There's another product called W Plus 9 Wafer Board. This is also kind of thick, just like the Ellen Hudson product. This has a craft color to it. These are both great for adding quick thickness to any of your die cuts or layers on your card. I really like both of them. Now, if you're interested in any of the products I mentioned, you can check the YouTube description below. Just expand it, and you'll see links to all the things I talked about. Or you can go to my blog at jennifermcguireinc.com. I'll be sharing a lot about this series, and there'll be links to all the different products. Also, be sure to check my other videos because I'm talking about everything from stamps to die cutting to my favorite tools and more. And it'll end up being about 10 days total. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you in another video for my crafty things.